Greetings from Dr. Peter McLuhan, your host for another adventure in the life Jesus modeled. Our topic today is the day Peter left fishing. In the Gospels, there are two stories about Jesus helping the disciples to make an extraordinarily large catch of fish. In both cases, Peter was the central character in the story. Jesus used these two miraculous catches to capture Peter's heart. Last week, we focused on the first miraculous catch. This week, we will examine the second miraculous catch. Following the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, he appeared to the disciples in the upper room. While there, he instructed them to return to Galilee where he promised to meet them again. The disciples must have believed him because they made the five-day journey back to Capernaum. This is where we continue our study of the life Jesus modeled. John says, after this, Jesus revealed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. John chapter 21 and verse 1. Tiberias is another name for the Sea of Galilee. John tells us that at least seven of the disciples gathered at one of the best places to catch fish around the lake. Just west of Capernaum, seven hot and cold springs feed the Sea of Galilee with fresh water. The warm springs make an ideal location for fish to spawn their young. John says Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other of his disciples were together. And Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. And they said to him, we will go with you. John 21 verses 2 through 3. Perhaps Peter was so disappointed in himself for denying Jesus on the night he was arrested, that he thought Jesus could no longer use him and he should try going back to what he knew so well, the fishing business. It could be that the others were having second thoughts as well and they agreed to go fishing with Peter. But something unusual happened that night. They caught nothing. John chapter 21 and verse 3. It's one thing to have a small catch, but to catch nothing is almost unheard of when fishing in that area of the Sea of Galilee, especially around the warm springs. The reason they fished at night was because in those days, nets were made out of string and the fish could see the nets in the water during the daylight hours. As the sun began to rise, the disciples were feeling rather defeated because they had not caught any fish. They had failed Jesus, and now they were about to fail at their backup plans if things did not work out with Jesus. To their surprise, they heard a, a voice from the beach calling out to them, Children, do you have any fish? And they answered, No. And he said to them, Cast the net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. And they cast it. And now they were not able to haul it in because of the quantity of fish. John chapter 21, verse 5 and 6. They did not realize that the person calling to them from the beach was Jesus. When John saw the large catch of fish, he knew only Jesus could do something like that. So John said to Peter, it is the Lord. And when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment, for he was stripped for work and threw himself into the sea. John chapter 21 and verse 7. Peter wanted to be the first disciple to be with Jesus in Galilee most likely at the very same place they met each other three years ago. John says, 
the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, about a hundred yards off. John chapter 21 and verse 8. When they got out on the land, they saw a charcoal fire in place and fish laid on it and bread. John chapter 21 and verse 9. And Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore, a large, full of large fish, 153 of them, although there were so many, the net was not torn. Luke, John chapter 21, verses 10 and 11. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. John chapter 10, verse 10 and 12. They knew Jesus had died, and now he was alive. People who don't think Jesus died will change their mind when they meet him in person. They will know it is Jesus. Jesus took some of the bread and gave it to them, and so with the fish. John chapter 21 in verse 13, people tell me that God can't eat, but clearly God ate a meal with Abraham when he visited him at the Oaks of Mamre and confirmed to him that he would have children. Jesus' meeting with the disciples was as important as God's meeting with Abraham. This was now the third time that Jesus was revealed to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. John chapter 21 and verse 14. So there, this is the third of ten recorded appearances Jesus made following his death, burial, and resurrection. Jesus is still appearing to people in person, letting them know he's very much alive. Jesus is appearing in dreams and visions to help people discover that he is alive. Many times Jesus healed people when he appears to them. If you would like Jesus to visit you, ask him. Expect him to visit you and he'll show up and show you his nail scars in his hands and in his feet and he will help you to believe in him. Jesus showed up in Galilee to help the disciples believe in him. This appearance by Jesus had a very specific purpose. Everyone knew the disciples had fled the night Jesus was arrested. By building a charcoal fire, Jesus had recreated the scene around which Peter had denied him in Caiaphas's courthouse. And when they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? And he said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, feed my lambs, John 21 and verse 15. Jesus asked Peter the same question three times. It was clear that Jesus was helping Peter overcome the three times he had denied ever knowing him. Jesus knew Peter needed help overcoming his failure. Perhaps you have had a failure, and like Peter, you might think that God cannot use you anymore. That is a lie the enemy will keep bringing up and holding against you until you believe and feel you are fully forgiven and set free from your failures. Jesus knows how to heal and to restore people. He will find a way to heal you the way he healed Peter. The miraculous catch was a prophetic picture of how God would use Peter in the future to help millions of people turn to Jesus for salvation. When Jesus asked Peter, do you love me more than these? Jesus could have been asking Peter if he still thought he loved Jesus more than the other disciples. Or Jesus could have been asking Peter if he loved fishing 
more than following Jesus. There are some interesting similarities and differences between the two miraculous catches of fish and their impact on Peter. For the similarities, the disciples had fished all night and caught nothing. And Jesus showed up in their moment of despair. The nets were full to the point of breaking, but they did not break. They needed help bringing the catch in. But there are some important differences to note as well. After the catch of fish, Peter said to Jesus, Depart from me, I am sinful. But after the second catch of fish, Peter jumped into the water to be the first disciple to reach Jesus. The first catch took Peter out of fishing. The second catch took fishing out of Peter. Both catches of fish provided for the financial needs of the disciples as they left the fishing business to follow Jesus. As you follow Jesus, he will provide for your needs as well. The disciples' love of fish and fishing was replaced by a deeper love for Jesus and partnering with Jesus to fish for the souls of men and of women. If you're at the point of quitting ministry and trying to go back to whatever you used to do, ask Jesus to do for you what he did for Peter. He will provide for you as he invites you to partner with him in spreading the good news about Jesus around the world. Next week, we'll continue studying the life Jesus modeled. Let me take a few moments and pray for you. If you're not sure that Jesus actually died for you and rose again, ask him to visit you. Ask Jesus to show you the nails and his scars in his hands and in his feet. Jesus is calling you to follow him, and he will miraculously provide for you. When Jesus asks you to leave something behind to follow him, it will be so worth it. I release to you the faith to trust Jesus to do whatever he is asking you to do. Last week, I invited you to ask God for a rhema word. That is a specific word that you would hear his voice calling you. He is willing to speak to you and show you what to do next. Ask him to speak to you. Write to me and tell me what God says to you. It will be so worth it to follow him. Next week, we'll continue studying the life Jesus modeled. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk with someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as $1 a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations to Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God God bless you and fill you with living hope.